What's up, everybody? It's Appalachian Bassin here with another episode. Uh, this episode is going to pertain to uh, fall bass, fishing tips, and you know, stuff like that. But before I get in depth in the video, I just want to say from the bottom of my heart that you know, I'm, I'm thinking about everybody that's been affected by Hurricane Matthew. You're in my thoughts, you're in my prayers. I just, uh, it's an unspeakable tragedy. But I wish it could have been avoided somehow. I just can't imagine what you guys are going through. So, um, and anybody that watches this, you know, just you know, say a prayer for them, light a candle, you know, do, do whatever it is that you do. You know, just, I just want you guys to you know, think about those who have lost loved ones and lost everything and this tragedy that's affected everybody from. Everybody from Haiti all the way to here in the States. You know, Haiti got the worst of it, but I mean, a loss is a loss. Nice. And, you know, I, was, I have a friend named Adam Oaks. Um, he and another crew guys, they, they went to Florida so that they could help out in the cleanup and all that. Uh, Adam, if you watch this video, buddy, I just want you to be careful. I want you to take care of yourself, take care of those around you, those you're working with, and those those that you were helping. And you know, just work safe. Do the best you can to work as safe as you can. That's all I ask, man. But, uh, anyway, with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and get into this video. Uh, when you're when you're fishing for bass in the fall. You know, it's it's really fun because uh, a lot of these fish they're they're feeding on these bait fish. You know, whether it be shad, bluegill, uh, perch, freak chubs, you know, whatever is available to them. These, these bass they're gonna be feeding on these bait fish so that they can get fed up for winter time. And you know, a lot, a lot of people that I know and that I've seen on TV and stuff they they've caught record sized bass. You know, about this time of year. So what happens is, is uh, like I said, temperature changes. Bass know that winter time's coming. So they're, they're trying to get fed up all that they can you know, before before winter time does come. So, all right. With that being said, uh, if you're if you're fishing in a boat, it's a good idea to use your depth finder to uh, locate the schools of bait fish. Um, a lot of times you'll see these schools around the uh, weeded areas because weeds produce a lot of oxygen for the fish. Um, you know, if, if there's no weeds in the area, uh, look for rock beds. Most of the time your depth finder will tell you what the uh, what the bottom is like, whether it's rocky, whether it's you know, sand, whether it's weeded, you know, grass, whatever. Uh, if, if you can't find anything in the weeds, if you don't have weeds, then look for the rock beds because when when the sun's beating down on the water you know the water temperature is going to be let's say 55 degrees but you know sometimes the the rocks you know they, they might be 60 degrees you know I've actually seen the temperature increase be as much as five degrees so, you know the, the colder the water is in this fall transition the fish are going to be looking for somewhere warmer and rocks hold heat, so you know it's, it's a good idea to fish around the rock beds if you can. Uh, there are a lot of places that like fish if there's no rock beds or you know, if there's no weeds or anything. Look on look on points, look in look in or around coves, uh, look in creek channels. You know, a lot of times these bait fish are gonna be moving up into the back of the creeks and stuff like that. You know, that's that's where the fish are gonna be hiding as well. Well, I shouldn't say hide them. They're just they're just, they're just lurking behind the, uh, <laughs> the school of bait fish. But uh, anyway, that being said, uh, the baits I like to use, you know, I use a wide variety of different stuff. A lot of people will tell you I only use a lipless crankbait or use a chatterbait, you know, something like that, or a spinnerbait. I, I use I use those. I use tubes. I use swim jigs. Uh, I use uh, I use a lot of soft plastics. Uh, and the color that I use for a lot of these is white. 
you know, if, if the water clarity is clear, or, you know, not not really that stained, I like to go with something white or, you know, chrome, silver, you know, something, something like that. Now for, for muddy water, I like to use something chartreuse color, something orange, red, uh, you know, something that's going to stand out just a little bit better. And uh, anything with blades on it, because the, the blades are going to make noise. And if the, if the water is stained really bad, you know, the fish might not be able to see it. Even though it's bright color, they might not be able to see it as well. But they're going to pick up on the vibrations. So, you know, they're, they're, going, they're going to be on it quick. Um, yeah, that's... There's just some of the things that I like to use. Uh, I, I don't feel like digging into my tackle boxes right now to uh, dig out some of the baits that I'm going to be using. But like I said, if, if the water is clear, use something white, silver, chrome color. Uh, yeah, some, sometimes I use uh, even these little, uh, little creature bait that's white color just simply because it's white. And I've got a lot of reaction strikes from that and I've landed a lot of decent fish like that. Uh, but don't don't take my word for it. I mean, you, know, you can you can try and see what what the fish are going to be hitting on, but most of the time, the, the things that I mentioned, that's going to be what they're going to be hitting off of. And uh, like I said, I think I've covered most of. Uh, sorry, I'm answering an email here. So I think I've covered most everything that uh, the fish are going to be feeding on, what what conditions to look for. Uh, you know, if you can't find rock beds and stuff like that, just go back to the basics and look for structure. I mean, laydowns, wooden laydowns and stuff like that, they're, they're going to hold heat as well. Probably not as much as the rocks, but it's going to be... It's going to be a little bit warmer around that lay down than it is out in the open water or on the bottom or whatever. But uh, the different things that I like to do sometimes is uh, I like to throw out like a, like a wacky rigged white minnow or something. You know, I like to throw that out on a drop shot rig. Uh, you know, I ha have seen some strikes like that. And that's actually produced fish as well. Uh, should have mentioned that a little bit earlier. But, and that's one thing that came to mind just now. And uh, another thing, like I said, the lipless crankbait is something that I really like to use because it, you know, if you're if you're fishing around cover, you know, just go ahead, throw it out. And whenever you get just a little bit past the cover, it doesn't matter really how you retrieve it before you get to the cover, but once you get past the cover, just a little bit. I like to stop, stop the retrieve, and you know, I'll, I'll retrieve a little bit quicker, give her a jerk or two. You know, I've actually seen seen that produce some good strikes and land some good fish that way. And uh, the, the video of my unofficial mystery tackle box slam the other day, uh, I was using a, a white, white creature bait. And uh, you know, I'd already been there since dark, but I was getting prepped up and everything. And, you know, I just knew that I was going to catch something, something decent on the uh, white creature bait. But I usually don't recall the name of it, but I'll find it and I'll leave it in the description of this video. I'll leave a link to it. Um, you know, that, that produced the first and the biggest fish of the day. It is a just a shade, just a shade under four pounds. So I just went ahead and caught a four pounder. Excuse me. Uh, and I caught it within ten feet of the bank. Um, I probably cast it out well over 60, 80 feet, and uh, you know, didn't get a strike, didn't get a nibble, anything. Uh, every every little tug that I would feel, it was. Uh, uh, I paused for a second, make sure that it wasn't a fish, then you know, I continue to retrieve. But you know, once I got within 15 feet, you know, I, I, I felt it bump it once. You know, 
Uh, that's when I set the hook. And I, at first I thought I got hung up, but then you know I felt the fish start to fight, and then you know, that's when it surprised me. I was like, oh my god! <laughs> you know, it's it's not often you catch a four pounder, you know, right at the freaking bank. You know that was that was pretty cool. I just I just wish that my camera would have been in play in, in a better placement. That way it could have got all the action. But uh, yeah, it, it was just it was just sweet. <laughs> For lack of better words, it was sweet. But, uh, yeah. Anyway, I'll leave a link to that creature bait in the description. I'll also leave a link to some of my other baits that I'm too lazy to go and dig out right now. I'll leave a link to those in the description as well. And uh, yeah, that'll give you a little bit of an idea of what to use for all bass fishing. Like I said, uh, it, it's a fun time of the year to be fishing, but the main thing is, is you know, if it's, if it's fairly cold outside, you know, make sure that you dress appropriately, you know, wear thermals if you have to, wear a jacket, wear a hoodie, you know, something that's going to keep the cold off of you, and, uh, you know, even, even if it's not sunny out, I'll still wear sunglasses because sometimes it'll be windy, and, you know, it's just hard to tell what's going, what's going to get in your eyes. I don't particularly want to wear safety glasses out while I'm fishing, even though it might be a good idea sometimes considering some of the uh, pictures I've seen of people getting like, spoons and stuff like that gouged in their eye from somebody that's, that's carelessly trying to cast but uh yeah I, I wear sunglasses sometimes just to just kind of make sure that the wind's not going to irritate my eyes and you know, if it's sunny out of course I'm going to wear them anyway but, yeah, I mean, just dress appropriately is the main thing. Don't stay out in the cold too long. I mean, if it's really, really cold, you know, you surely don't want to stay out there and catch hypothermia before you catch a fish. So, you know, like I said, just, just be responsible. Don't, don't do anything crazy, really. So, all right, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and end this video. But, uh, I work tonight. I'm excited for two days off. So hopefully I can produce a fishing video either tomorrow, tomorrow night, or maybe Tuesday or Tuesday night. I'm gonna try to go fishing both days. I can't make promises because you know, there's wife, there's family, and, and stuff like that. But, but fishing gives life. I, I'm fine. <laughs> All right. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. Uh, I just want to thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for subscribing to my channel. And uh, whenever you get a second, just go uh, you know, take the kids fishing. Let them, if, they have, if they've never been before, take them fishing. Let them have fun. Teach them the basics of it. And uh, if you've got a family member that doesn't get out a whole lot or anything like that, take them fishing too. I mean, you know, try, try to get somebody into fishing. It, it's amazing. It's amazing what what you can bring about in a relationship with anybody if you take them fishing. So uh, yeah, that's that's about all I got for this video. I just sorry, cats making noise. But, uh, that's, that's about all I have for this video. Uh, remember to like this video, share it with your friends. If you, if you know somebody that likes to go fast fishing, and uh, subscribe to my channel. For more stuff like this I'll be doing more stuff like this in the future and uh, you know, more more fishing videos are coming my camera messed up and you know, I'm trying to work on an alternative or a permanent fix for that I'll, I'll figure something out it's just gonna take a little bit of time but anyway that's all I got you guys have a wonderful day I'm gonna go in the kitchen make me some grub real fast and I'm gonna hit the sheets yeah, we got one more night, and we got two nights off. Be sure to stay tuned for content in the future. Hope you guys have a wonderful day.